Okay, hey there, thanks for joining me. I'm Zach, and I made this thing called Nobbler. Uh, Nobbler is a parameter-focused control surface for Ableton Live, and you'll see some of the things that Nobbler does here today. And I wanted to do a video today about a, a workflow that I've developed recently that uh, I'm excited about using, and I thought I'd share it with you today. And what that workflow entails is Nobbler, Racks, and Variations. And let me, let's get into what all that is, step by step. So first thing we'll do is uh, I'll just make a new track and add an operator synth to that track. Um, and if you've used operator before, you know there's just a ton of controls. You know, this, I think, uh, you know, there are probably a hundred different parameters. In Nobbler, you can see them in different banks as Ableton has exposed them in these banks. But navigating these banks when you're performing or, you know, coming up with musical ideas could kind of be too much like so you want a shortcut to some of these parameters for while you're doing a performance and so a nice way to do that is to group a device into a rack and you can have a rack with just one device and simply use the rack as your sort of parameter shortcuts so i'll show you how to do that so first with the device selected i'm going to do command g control g on windows and let's show the macro knobs. So by default, it'll come up with eight. Let's expand that to 16. And so, you know, we can look and see like, well, what parameters do we want to expose from operator into this level here? And then this will give us really quick access to up to 16 parameters that we can perform with. So let's check it out. So, you know, probably let's say oscillator A level, and maybe I'll just fast forward through this, like spread tone, that's a good one to have. I like to put volume consistently on number 16. So it's always here, uh, kind of no matter, no matter what I'm working on, um, I can just kind of have that muscle memory of like, oh, this is how I'll control the volume. So let's add some more parameters here. Like let's talk about the filter. So frequency and resonance and envelope amount. Maybe we can put a couple other filter ones down here just so we have a little filter area next to our volume. So I'll put a tack on uh, number 14 here and decay on 15. And we've got a handful more here to work on. Oh yeah, let's do like maybe LFO controls. And so like LFO rate, that's nice to have LFO amount. Okay, cool. Yeah, and let's put like pan on 13. Oh yeah, let's, let's make a, like a plucky little thing. And so what we'll do for these three oscillators that we're interested in here, we're just gonna drop their sustain to zero and map their decay to macro 11. Okay, so what we've got now is we've got a whole surface here dedicated to the controls that we want to control with operator to make this kind of a noise. And so let's just call, let's rename this rack and we'll call it operator plucky. And I'll put my initials on it just so it's easy to command F, you know, and find in the, in the browser up here. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. We've got, you know, short sounds. I can uh, lengthen the, the delay. We've got some vibrato coming in, so I can just drop that. And bring in the other oscillators to get it more FME sounding. Uh, play with the filter. Cool. So this is something that, you know, maybe you get to know this as an instrument, and then you can develop muscle memory around where the parameters are here while you're, while you're playing. All right, so there's a, a pretty wide range of sounds we can get out of this. And so let's, let's shift gears a little bit and let's look at a different rack that I, I use in, uh, this is part of my default template here. It's a, it's a kick drum sound. You may, if you've seen other videos of mine, you probably have seen this. This is a rack. It has a, a nested rack in it with an attack chain and a sustain chain. And you know, each of those is a wavetable synth and maybe going through effects and things like that. And so we've got, you know, a very complicated construction with, you know, maybe a thousand possible parameters. And that's all distilled up here into a single rack with currently 15 mapped parameters. And so I just wanted to show this as an example of something, you know, very flexible um, in terms of making kick drum sounds. So, you know, we can, you know, make something, you know, this is kind of 
has a lot of sustain and, you know, kind of some pitch movement, we can take that out. We can take out the click at the beginning or more or make it very prominent. Let's make a you know, 909 sort of a... Huge possibilities just with a few sliders. And because I use this all the time, I really know, oh, I want to make the sound go this way or that way. And so I just know ex immediately where to go here. And I don't need to, you know, hunt around with the mouse and all that. Okay, here's another instrument that I put together recently. It's an operator followed by a delay effect that I've made called tap pan And what, what I've done is, you know, mapped relevant parameters to the macro knobs in this uh, in this rack. Uh, but what I wanted to show with this is variations. And so you'll see in this device here, we've got the, the variations displayed, and I've got three variations already set uh, with this rack. And um, we can access them here in Nobbler with these buttons. You can, you can hear these are all very different. And the cool thing here about variations is they're really easy to create and capture. And so, you know, we can be, you know, messing around. Maybe we want something a little more tame, but quick. And we want it to use a different, here, I'll show the devices here. Uh, this slider here controls the, the tap Panzite delay pre uh, preset that's loaded. So we get that sort of delay effect. So we can get like that delay effect. And if we like that, you can either, you know, use this new button here, if you want to use the mouse or just use this little camera icon here on Nobbler, tap that and now we've created and are using a new variation. And so we can flip from that back to where we started immediately. And so this is just a powerful performance control. You know, you can very quickly switch into and out of things. One other thing I wanted to show is just the power of uh, the shortcut buttons combined with racks too, right? So in a song that you're working on, you know, you probably have a lot, lot of tracks, but there's probably some instruments that you're working on like right now or very frequently. And so I use the shortcut buttons at the top here to make shortcuts to the racks that I'm making. So, you know, normally I put the kick on this first, first one here. I've got a bass instrument. It's not racked, but you know, um, and we can put that one and that one. And you know that you don't have to put racks in here. Like maybe you want to occasionally dive into this operator uh, individually. Well, just with that device selected, I can have a, a shortcut just to that. So I can flip between the rack and the device itself and really dive into all of its parameters too. So there's no stopping you. And you can also do that navigation from the side here and, you know, even dig into a very deep nested rack uh, this way and get right into whatever you want to be editing. Okay. And the last thing that I wanted to show today was the uh, the randomize button. And so, you know, back to the first rack that we made, we've got all these parameters that we like. You know, maybe that's a variation we want to save, but maybe we're just kind of feeling lazy or maybe we want to just kind of let the computer drive. And so we've got this button here, it's a dice and you can tap that and that's just going to randomize all of these parameters. Now, depending on how flexible you're, you're allowing these uh, macros to control your instrument, you may not get any sound out of this, right? In this case, we've got like oscillator one needs to be louder. I think the filter frequency needs to be up. But listen to that, right? <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to save that one as a variation. Let's roll the dice. Oh, okay, we've got, yeah, it's because the... Fun. Save that, right? So... 
I think this is just kind of super efficient and fast. That's why I like it. All right, cool. Well, that's what I wanted to show today. Just the power of racks and macros, variations, capturing them and randomizing them. And so have fun with that. I'm happy to answer any questions you've got in the comments or I'll put my email in, in the description too. And when you're out there, happy noblin. Bye now.